Hey, welcome back. So for this video, we are working on our second exercise for understanding curves. This is tracing the sketch picture. So what we're going to do is trace over an image and then extrude that trace onto the surface of this device and make an indentation. So let's go ahead and get started. So for your first step, you do want to create a copy of this document right here. This is what the copy looks like. For step two, we're going to create a new sketch and embed an image. So let's go ahead and create sketch. And for our plane, we are going to select the surface of this face right here. Let's go ahead and open up this drop down menu for the image. Click on insert image. Click on on shape logo. Now let's go back to our instructions. For step three, we are just placing our image and then we're going to give it a dimension. So let's go ahead and draw it out. And by the way, you do want to show your origin to show that. You do need to click on this right here, um, show origin. So let's resize this right here. So I'm going to put this at a value of 2.5 inches. Now I also want to make this top line right here. Um, I want to set it at, with the midpoint to the origin so that it can be connected. And that is good to go. Let's also rename this to logo. Here's what that looks like. So let's go back and forward and we get our image. For step four, we are going to create a new sketch on the same plane right here. Let's rename it as trace and this is where we will be doing our work. So do not close this yet. So for step five, we are going to use the spline feature to actually create the rounded edges around the O. So let's go ahead and get started. So we are going to go ahead and click on spline and I'm going to select, oops, I got the wrong piece. Let's zoom in a little bit. I'm going to select this piece right here, this edge, another edge down here. Select that edge and then going back up here. Let's go ahead and do the same for this section here. All right, so in this situation, we do want to increase the size of this portion but notice everything is kind of increasing so let's go ahead and add some spline points over here to this point there another one another one to actually define the curvature of this o so there it is make that a little bit less rounded there and we're going to keep doing this until we trace the outline of the o So we're good there. And there it is. Now for step six, we are going to now trace out the N and the S. So let's go ahead and move this so that we are visualizing the O and the, the N and the S. So in this case, let's go ahead and start off by doing all the lines. So let's go ahead and click on L. I'm going to zoom in right here, make sure I get this line correct. That is not vertical, this one's horizontal, this one is vertical, and I'll end it right there, another horizontal line. Um, let's hold shift so that we do not create relationships at the moment. So that one's good. So let's go ahead and add some more lines. One that goes right here, parallel to that. We add this line there. Let's go ahead and add another line here keeps going up here and let's finish that up and our final line with this S here. All right, so now we can start adding our splines. Let's go to the drop down menu and click on spline and let's just go ahead and connect these pieces right here. Click escape. There it is. Click escape. We're still on our spline tool. So now we're going to add another spline here. So we click there and actually hold shift because notice we're almost building relationships. So hold shift so that we don't create the relationships. And let's add another spline there and one there. And then we'll connect to this dot here. So we do want to create a constraint for this. All right, so let go of shift and make sure you created that union there. Hit escape. All right, so now we create another spline here. We add it to this section. And we do not want to make this vertical here. So hold shift to avoid making a relationship there. 
Let's click there. Oops, almost made something. So we'll fix that right now. And then I connect to this portion there. All right, so in this case, I created this relationship there. I want to get rid of that. So I click on it and I click delete. Okay. So let's start off by moving this one upwards. Going up, up. And then I move this one gently here. This one goes right there. And if your starts getting all warped, you may have added a constraint that shouldn't have been there. So make sure you delete any constraints that should not be there. All right, so this is looking fairly good. It does not have to be perfect. So now we want to add some tangent points. So let's actually make these following areas tangent. So we want this curve and this line to be tangent. And then we want this line and this portion right here to be tangent. That sums it up. Now for step seven, we are going to create this H right here. So let's drag over the H. Let's start off by creating our lines. So I'm going to create a line right here. And then I keep going down. I'm going to drag it around and hold shift so that I do not create a relationship. Let's create another line up here. And there it is. Need a few more lines and then we're finished. I can finish up right there. All right, so now we spline again. Just click on that point there and then we make it coincidental here. Let's escape and let's add another spline here. And let's go ahead and drag this to manipulate it. That looks good. This one right here. Let's zoom in a little bit. And that looks good. All right, so now we're going to make some tangent points. This is going to be tangent to this line, and this will be tangent to this line. Notice if we ever mess up, we'll notice if we click on the wrong tangent, if we make the wrong lines tangent, you may get an error like this. So let's not do that. For step eight, we're going to be making the letters A and P. In my case, I either like adding the splines or the lines, but let's go with the lines. So we'll start off here. This is not a vertical line, so let's make it a little bit angled. Finish it up right there. Go down here to the side, and then go up. And let's click Escape. Let's add another line here. Another line here for the P. And now let's get this bottom area done. So let's make sure we don't mess this up. Let's zoom in a little bit. And we're just creating all these lines. All right, so let's go ahead and start splining. So let's go here and to this corner. Let's see what that looks like right now. So let's get that curvature going. Whoops, I added a spline I wasn't supposed to add. Go up and we adjust the curvature and that's looking fairly good right there. Okay, and then if we wanted to make this a bit more pronounced, we can add a spline point right there. And now we can add a little bit more curvature and definition. We forgot a line right here. Good. Let's keep splining. In these areas with multiple curves, we're going to add spline points. So let's go ahead and do that. And then adding a separate spline here. This is a brand new spline. Get that curve there. Add a spline here, click that center, and then back there. And now for the P. There it is. And remember, if something pops up like right here with this dotted, this dashed orange line, that means that a relationship is forming. Let's avoid those, hold shift, and you can avoid that, or we can just connect there. And we need this bigger P, so let's go right here. And notice a relationship is about to form in this center area, so I'm gonna hold shift, and then I connect right there. All right, so let's go ahead and adjust this.
Now it's at a spline point here. And that's looking good. So you can add more spline points as you do this to get more definition, or you could just leave it as is. And remember to zoom in to make sure you get those details. Let's go down here. Finish up with the A. And that is done. Now we're on to our final letter, the E. So in this situation, let's go ahead and add our few lines. I believe there are only three of them. Oh, no, there's four of them. And then this point right here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and spline yet again. So let's get this little portion right here. Escape. And then I start adding my other spline right there. Be very careful to make these, to not make these uh, with the relationships. So if you're in a position, make sure you hold shift to avoid these relationships. And then we connect the way. All right, so let's start manipulating this so we'll get our letter e right there that curves good this one's looking kind of weird we'll fix that in a moment oops all right so now let's add some definition here by adding spline points there and there Let's move this up a little bit. We need another spline point. We need another spline point right here. This E is requiring quite a bit of definition. And there it is. We need one more spline from this letter, this corner to this corner here. And let's get that definition down. And there it is. At this point, the logo is down. Let's go ahead and hit the check mark. And by the way, we do need to rename this to trace. Okay, so for step 10, we are being asked to hide the logo so that we make sure we see that everything is defined and we have everything connected, it looks good. So now for step 11, we are extruding our trace onto the plane. So let's go ahead and click extrude. And we are selecting the faces and sketch regions to extrude. We are clicking on trace and we are going to remove. So notice remove and the merge scope is on the plate, so let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So we're smerging pretty far. We don't want to merge that much. Or what we want to do is only go up to a depth of 0 0.01. So go ahead and click on that. Enter. And let's see what happens. So there's our indentation. So now that we're finished creating our um, extrude, at this point for step 12, we do want to check our work. So what you want to do is click on all of these letters right here, make sure they're highlighted, and then use this measure tool to check the surface area, and you'll be using this for the self-check. Anyways, thanks for watching, and continue on.